you have your Bibles this morning, open them to Romans, chapter 8. We will be looking at verses 18 through 27 in the New Living Translation. Romans chapter 8, starting with 18. Yet what we suffer now is nothing compared to the glory He will reveal to us later. For all creation is waiting eagerly for that future day when God will reveal who His children really are. Against His will, all creation was subjected to God's curse, but with eager hope. The creation looks forward to the day when it will join God's children in glorious freedom from death and decay. For we know that all creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth right up to the present time. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait with eager hope for the day when God will give us our full rights as His adopted children, including the new bodies He has promised us. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something... We don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently patiently and confidentially. And the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father, who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. This is the Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Groaning. Oh, my goodness. Do you groan when you get up in the morning? Especially when you've been working out in the yard all day long the day before. I see you do. Oh, you get out of bed and you go, "Mm, what did I do? Oh, I can't hardly move and you're groaning. When you sit down in a chair after a hard day and you sit down in that lazy boy and you finally can get relaxed, you just go, when you sit down and just, oh, you're so glad to sit down for a minute. And you groan when you sit down? Do you groan when something goes wrong? You know, the whole day it's been one thing after another thing after another thing, and then something else goes wrong and you just go, oh. What happens when you step on that scale to weigh? (laughs) Okay, I know, I see. There's some groaning going on when we look at that scale. Paul uses this description throughout these passages. Paul is teaching on the new life in Jesus Christ based on God's promises and plans. He addresses the future kingdom where death is no more and all tears from sorrow, pain, or grief are wiped away. All creation waits to see what God is going to do when mankind is restored to its original purpose. Creation waits for the answer to the question, what does it really mean to be God's children? In Genesis... God placed all creation under the curse. 
The ground was cursed, producing thorns of all kinds and weeds of all kinds and undesirable plants, such as poison ivy, chickweed, crab grass. This is the time of year that we have gardens, you know, and many of you have gardens. On Browns Valley Road, there's a family that every time I've passed over the years, they took like half their yard and made it into a garden. And every year I go past this garden, and it is pristine. They keep it so clean and neat that not a weed would dare poke its head up through the ground. Now, some of you keep your yards that away too. Yes, I have seen you. You go out with that little shovel for potting soil and potting pots, and you dig those weeds up by the root and pull them up out of your grass. You want that yard to look perfect. My neighbor told me that my yard was uh, in fashion this year. It is called White Top Clover. And I know some of you, your yard is in fashion this year too. That may, should make you feel better. Farming is hard. There's a constant battle with weeds. When we think of paradise in the Garden of Eden, do you know and realize that there were no weeds in the garden? Everything you needed was there. Fruits and vegetables and everything that you could possibly eat was there. With the fall... Adam and Eve would have to go out into the world to grow their own food. Now, think about that for a moment. They had never had to do that. They had never had to search for food. Their life just got extremely difficult. With the fall women would experience painful labor during childbirth and death. Death entered the world. All of God's creation was cursed. There was such a strong longing to be free from death and decay. God tells us that there will be a new heaven and a new earth. No more sin. Creation is restored as it was in the beginning. The earth and the universe will not be destroyed. It will be restored. You know, when Adam and Eve made the decision that they made, God didn't take all His plans for creation and tear them up into little bitty pieces and throw them away. You see, His creation is still good. And it is going to be restored. All creation groans under the misery of pain and disorder. <clears throat> groans of suffering. Groans as loud as a woman in the pain of childbirth. <clears throat> Excuse me. Another thing we look forward to is pollen. That's always a good thing. <clears throat> I heard that groan. Humans groan as they wait to receive our new bodies. Do you groan when something goes, on, goes wrong with your body? You know, as we age, we do get some aches and pains and some creakiness about us, but then we all of a sudden notice that something is just not like it should be, and you groan because you think, oh, no, no. And then we find out we may need to go to the doctor. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't go to the doctor unless I really, really need to go to the doctor, and then I groan because I don't want to go to the doctor. Our bodies will be released from sin and suffering when we enter the kingdom of God. 
A brand new glorified body is coming. No more arthritis. No more migraine headaches. No more high blood pressure or diabetes. No more cancer or heart disease. A new body, an improved body. I ought to hear some hallelujahs out there. And you can think about that. A new body. The bodies we have now are suited for this world. With the coming of the new heaven and the new earth, we will have a new body suited for the new world. A body like our glorified Lord. We groan when we have to take pills or treatments or just plain hurt. Why wouldn't we groan to be released into a new body and a new life? Followers of Jesus Christ have that hope and that promise. Amen? Listen to verses 24 and 25 again. We were given this hope when we were saved. If we already have something, we don't need to hope for it. But if we look forward to something we don't yet have, we must wait patiently and confidently. Hope. What hope? Hope is in our salvation. Salvation comes through Jesus Christ. As a child of God, we will live on the new earth and we will see the new heaven. Our new body will be ours for eternity. God keeps His promises. You can stand on God's Word. There are times in our life that we face circumstances or issues that place us in a position where we don't know how to pray. A loved one could be sick, and we want them to get better, but things aren't looking well. We don't know how to pray for them or to pray for the doctors and nurses helping them. Maybe you're praying about your marriage. Maybe you're not as close as you used to be. Maybe there's some issues that are unresolved. How do you pray? Your child gets into trouble. Now, children get into trouble at all ages. Even our adult children get into trouble. There should be consequences. But we love our children. How do we pray for them? Maybe you have an unsaved friend that you have been witnessing to for years. You've invited them to church. and You've invited them to Sunday school. You've invited them to Bible study. But they still not have made that very important decision that affects their eternity. And you love this friend. And you don't want them to go to hell. How do you pray? Do you know the real needs as God sees them? Do you know the needs of others? Do you know the will of God regarding these things? Holy Spirit intercedes for you. Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God knows what needs to happen. Ask Him to pray. Pray on your behalf and on the behalf of the other person. Holy Spirit groans with us as He feels the burdens of this life. 
as He groans, He prays for us. You, you are in His prayers. He prays that we will seek God's will for our life. When you don't know how to pray, Holy Spirit intercedes for you. He prays that no matter what you are dealing with, you will want to be in God's will. Holy Spirit shares your burden. The same Holy Spirit that came on Pentecost resides in you. The same power that was given to those 120 men and women gathered in the upper room gave them the ability to share the gospel in different languages and gave Peter the words to preach. And 3,000 souls came to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. The same Holy Spirit that Jesus gave to the 70 disciples to cast out demons, heal the sick, and proclaim the kingdom of God. The same Holy Spirit that was present when God hurled the stars into the sky. And He created plants and animals, birds and all the creatures of earth. The same Holy Spirit that was there when man took his first breath. The Spirit of God came at Pentecost. And He is still here with us today. God, who is the Spirit of God, is living in you. Working in and through you. Now, you're still going to groan at times. The earth still groans. The universe still groans. But God gives us hope. Paul encourages us to wait patiently and confidentially. The groan will end. When the hope of the new creation and new earth are here, You will have your new body and you will be shouting for joy. The only groaning that will be heard will be from those lost souls who have gone on into hell. God provided all creation with a way to lift the curse through Jesus Christ. Hope is in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.